Hi everyone, welcome to practice problem IS05. This one is going to put your knowledge of the multi-step income statement to the test. So here I present you with select financial information for Blue Devil Corps for the year ended December 31, 2019. Notice that there are three missing pieces of information. The goal of the problem, based on your knowledge of how things are arranged and how things are mathematically related in the multi-step income statement, to come up with the missing values. Take a moment, pause the video, see if you can figure it out yourself. When you're ready, come on back and I'll walk through the solution. All right, welcome back. So we're not gonna worry about doing a perfectly formatted income statement or anything of that nature for this, this one, but we are going to have to, to some extent, assemble kind of a makeshift income statement or at least the main components of it in order to determine what's missing. Now, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to look at what's missing here, and I'm going to figure out where does that show up on the income statement, okay? And if I start with income tax rate, well, income tax rate does not show up on the income, tax uh, on the income statement. However, income tax rate does determine the income tax expense that gets recorded, and that income tax expense is the second to last line of your income statement. So income tax expense comes right before net income. And the thing right before it is income before taxes. So from that little bit of a structure, we know that if we have net income and we have income before taxes, we should be able to then figure out income tax expense and if we know income tax expense, we can simply figure out what percent of income before taxes that represents, and that will be the income tax rate. Now, looking at our given information, we know that net income is 50020 So net income, 50020. If we look at our given information for income before taxes, you'll notice it's not there. And so we're going to have to do a little bit more work on the upper side of the income statement before we can actually figure out that number. So for now, let's put this one on pause. But I am going to go ahead and scratch out net income. We have used it just to kind of keep track of what information we have used and haven't used. All right, let's move on to B temporarily. Um, we'll come back to A. All right, B, sales returns and allowances. So sales returns and allowances are a reduction of sales revenue. So on the upper side of the income statement, we're going to have sales rev less sales returns and allowances, less sales discounts, and that's going to equal, whoop, that's going to equal what's known as net sales. So let's see which of these numbers we can fill in. We know we're trying to solve for sales R and A. Do we have sales rev in the given information? Yes, we do, $350,000. Do we have sales discounts in the given information? Yes, we do, 5,000. And that is a subtraction from sales rev. Do we have net sales in our given information? Yes, we do, 320,000. All right, now, as opposed to the income tax one, which we had to kind of abandon ship and we'll return to later because we were missing some information, here we have all the information we need. 350 minus B minus 5,000 equals 320,000. So doing the math on that, our sales RNA is going to be a subtraction of 25,000. 350 minus 25 is 325, minus five more is 320. So B is 25,000. All right, so we've got B settled. Let's move on to C. C is asking us for cost of goods sold. Now, we are actually in good shape because in a multi-step income statement, the very next line after you figure out your net sales is what was the cost of those sales or the cost of goods sold. And that's a subtraction. And the difference between net sales and cost of goods sold gives us something known as gross Profit. Now, we already have net sales. Was gross profit given to us? It sure was, $100,000. So, by that logic, if we know that net sales was 320, gross profit was 100, 
That means that cost of goods sold must have been, and I'm going to change my coloring here just so it stands out, cost of goods sold must have been $220,000. And that is our C, $220,000. Now, let me go through and clean up now that we've done that top part. We used sales rev. We used our discounts. We have solved for sales RNA. Um, we used net sales. And we used gross profit. And we solved for COGS. All right, we've cleaned up. Because the reason I'm cleaning up is because now we've got to bridge the gap. We've got the top portion of the income statement here. We've got the bottom line of the income statement down here. But we still need to get from gross profit to income before taxes so we can figure out what that income tax expense was and therefore figure out what our income tax rate is. Now, after gross profit on your income statement, the next thing you need to do is subtract out any operating expenses of the company. So let's take a look. We have depreciation expense is an operating expense. And that appears to be, from what I can tell, the only one we've got. And so I'm going to go ahead and put op expenses. And again, I'm not doing a perfectly formatted income statement here. I'm just going to list the line items to help us do the math. So op expenses minus 60. After you get to done with your op expenses, then you're going to calculate a subtotal called income from operations. After that, you start dealing with your non-operating components. So next up, after our operating expense, which in this case was just the one depreciation expense, we've got the non-operating components. That would be an addition of 24,000 in dividend revenue. That'd be an addition of 9,000 in interest revenue and a subtraction of 12,000 loss on sale. And so I'm just gonna go ahead and just write these down. So we have 24,000, what is it? 9,000 and a subtraction of 12,000. So this is going to be our other revs. This is gonna be our other expenses. And once you've figured out all of the other revenues and expenses, but you haven't calculated taxes yet, that gets you to what's known as income before taxes. So if I simply subtotal all of this stuff that I've now done, I should be at income before taxes. Made a mark there. So I'm going to go ahead and pull up my calculator at this point just to make sure I don't make any egregious errors. We had 100000 in gross profit. We subtracted 60000 for um, op expenses. We added back 24 as well as nine for other revenues. We subtracted another 12 for other expenses. That's going to leave us with income before taxes of $61,000. Now, notice net income is 50-20. So minus 50-20 means that our income tax expense is $10,980. Let's go ahead and get that in there. Now, that's not the answer to the question, though. The question was, what was the income tax rate? The rate is just the percentage of income before taxes that got expensed as taxes. So all we have to do to figure this out now is divide that number by the 61,000 income before taxes, and it looks like our tax rate is 18%. And that is our answer for A. Just to, to spell that out in case you didn't see me see what I typed into the calculator, that 18% is specifically the 10980 That's the income tax expense. What fraction of 61000 income before taxes that represents? Or another way to think of it is if you made $61,000 and you pay 18% in taxes, multiply the two, you get an income tax expense of 10980 all right, that's it. Those are our missing values, A, B, and C. Like I said, this is not a fully formatted multi-step income statement. I just kind of jotted things down in the general order, but this was more of a test of, do you understand where things fit in, how they relate to each other mathematically? Can you solve for missing values should you need to do so? All right, that was it for this one. Hope you found it helpful, and I hope you join me for another.